So the learning outcome of the chapter uh, that uh, by the end of this course you should be able to explain uh, why direct material is considered to be a direct cost, understand the importance of physical and transaction inventory cost, explain the transport transaction cycle involved in receiving material from supplier to issuing them to production. Uh, more than that, you will be able to appreciate the need to hold stock throughout the trading period explain and calculate the various inventory control levels, discuss features of good inventory control systems, and compute stock values using different techniques such as FIFO and the weighted average method. So a brief, top, a brief topics that we're going to discuss, we shall look at uh, material controls, objective of material control, Purchasing procedures, store keeping, stock control, and uh, at the end of this chapter, uh, we shall look at uh, activities which may be in form of assignments, quizzes, discussions, or chats. To ensure that the uh, acquisition, storage, and uh, handling of uh, handling and the usage of all materials are fully controlled. There must be a system uh, which ensures that the uh, availability of the required quantity material of proper quality and proper time at the same time avoidance of unnecessary brokerage. So material have to be in the right quantity, right quantity, right place, right time, and in the most economical cost. So the, the cost of material, it depends on organization, but in, in most manufacturing organization or in many organization, material cost ranges from 50 to 70 percent uh, of the total cost. So let's look at the objectives of uh, material control. So one of the objectives of material control is availability of, the, of raw material, that is ensuring that uh, materials are available. As we have see, said before, that you need to ensure that material is available at the right time. So another one is to ensure proper quality and the price. Ensure that you purchase the right quality of the material and ensuring that you purchase those material at the right price. So another object of material control is to ensure minimum wastage. That if you are producing, ensure that you materials are stored and you minimize the loss of material or you minimize damage uh, of, mat of the items because if as you are increasing or as the wastage increases it means you are increasing a uh, cost of the raw material so another reason for material control is to ensure no overstocking if you go to finance overstocking it means you are making it, or some of your resources redundant. So by having material control, it helps to ensure that the materials are kept in the store and uh, you minimize uh, a lot of material that are not used in the organization. So another one is to minimize loss during process. So that one is almost similar to the Point number three, minimizing the wastage. So if you are, pro you are producing, uh, you, if you have purchased material of the good quality, then it's going to help to ensure that uh, you minimize the wastage uh, during the production process. Let's look, let's look at the aspects of material control. So the aspects of material control, we have the purchasing procedures, that is the way you purchase, uh, the process you, you, you fall into purchasing, we have receipt and inspection of the material, that is, when you, you purchase the material, then uh, during the process of receiving the material, then you need to carry out inspection. Then you have store keeping, ensuring that the goods are stored in your store. Then you have to put store control, that is, no one is, those controls that you know you are auditing, or the controls to ensure that the uh, material is safe and uh, you minimize or to avoid the safety of the material. So also have issue of materials that move, move the, the process 
when you are issuing material from store to production or from store to, to the consumption part. Uh, the pricing of material issue, that is we shall look at that in more details, ensuring that uh, you, you, you provide value of the material you have issued and then allocation of material material cost. We shall discuss this one. So let's briefly look at the purchasing procedure. So these are some of the purchasing procedures. Identify the source of supply. So when you are going to purchase, you need to first identify uh, where are you going to purchase the material? Who are going to be your suppliers? Meaning, you are going to provide the information or you are going to advertise looking for the materials and then you identify the suppliers. So after identifying the suppliers, then you list your suppliers and then you select the suppliers. So another one you can talk about is the negotiation of the purchase contract. So once you have finished soliciting or selecting the suppliers then you need to negotiate uh, the purchase contract although in tendering uh, some of these may be specified in your tender but after winning the tender you can still negotiate on the purchase cost or in the purchase contract what are going to be the terms in the contract what are going to be the delivery the, the, the other terms as may be uh, depending on the organization procedures so once you have finished the purchase contract then uh, you prepare a purchase order that is commanding the goods to be purchased then afterwards there is follow up on the delivery that is if a customer or if the supplier has not managed to to bring the goods on time you can make a follow up by calling the supplier asking why has it delayed to provide the goods on time so the last part I can say before we look at this is the receipt and the inspection. As we have said before, you receive the goods. If the supplier has brought the goods, then you receive those goods. And then before you, the goods are put into store, you need to do an inspection to ensure that the goods are of the right quality, of the right quantity, and other specifications as specified uh, in the contract. So this is a brief example, you can look at it, a brief example of a purchase requisition. It's going to show the batch number, the date, the department section where the goods are needed, and then the quantity, the description, So and then the, who prepared the, the purchase requisition, and then who approved the purchase requisition. So let's look at a rate of inquiry. A rate of inquiry it is written by the purchase it is issued by the purchasing department and it is sent to various suppliers if it, after receiving the the purchase requisition so if 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 the the user department provides the requisition for the goods so the purchasing department can prepare a rate of inquiry uh, look, which is sent to various suppliers it is similar to a tendering or it means like an advert of the goods that are needed. So the main purpose of this is to find out the price and the quality of the goods. So if you, you send the goods to the suppliers or the, the letter of income to the suppliers, the suppliers can is, specify the goods that they can be able to supply and then the price that they can charge uh, on those goods. We have what you call a quotation. A quotation, those are received from the suppliers when you send a letter of inquiry for, for example if you send a letter of inquiry to Kabuye Sugar asking for scar Kabuye Sugar can reply you that we can offer you this this type of sugar at this price so it, the, the, the price they are going to charge are going to charge are what to call the the quotations so quotation is an offer to supply goods according to the terms and the conditions so that is what we refer to as the quotations. Let's look at this example of a purchase order, what we call a local purchasing order. It is not very different from what we have looked at. It's going to show the address, the date, to who, the, the, please supply us the following goods. You list the goods you want to be supplied, the description, the code, the price, and then the value, and then you Someone who has prepared must sign, and someone who has authorized uh, must also sign. So when goods are received, then you prepare receipt of goods, or what called a goods received note. So still, you have the, good, the goods were received from this, 
the batch number of the goods, the description, the quantity, the package, the purchase order on which the goods were delivered, the rate, and then the value of the goods. Then you also show who, who has received the goods, who has also inspected those goods. So rejection or return of goods, when the goods are received from the supplier, you may find that some of the goods don't meet the specifications or some of the goods were damaged during that way, depending on the contract you have with the supplier. So some goods may be returned uh, to the supplier. Maybe the goods were of inferior quality, that is they don't meet the specification, or the goods were different from those which were uh, described. So when the goods are returned to the supplier, then a rejection notice should be issued, what we call uh, a debit note or a credit note may be issued to the supplier showing the goods that were rejected, the value of those goods and then what should be done. Another important document is the invoice. The invoice, it shows the quantity, um, the quantity may not be so much but it shows the quantity or the description of the goods, the price and the total value of the goods. So the invoice, mainly, it is about when you are going to pay for the goods. So you provide the value of the goods for what was the quantity, what was the description of the good, and then the price, the how many units, and then you get the total value of the goods. So that is the invoice. So once, once the goods have been received, the next part is to prepare or to pay for the goods, depending on the contract that you have with the supplier. So this is going to go to finance department or to accounting department for the goods to be paid. So the, the, when the goods are going to be paid, of course, they must be related to the, to the purchase order, it must be related to the delivery note, and it must be related to the goods received note. So whenever you are an invoice is issued, the invoice should be attached to the purchase order, it should be attached to the delivery, delivery note. So another one is the entries, recording of the purchases. Once the goods have been received, of course, when the goods are taken to the store, need to be recorded. So the entries are going to be made into uh, different accounts. So you have the goods received note, you have the invoice, you have the cost accounts. So these are going to be recorded into different... Uh, so another important thing is the uh, issue of materials. You Now you have the goods from in your store and then uh, you are moving the goods from store to, to production or you are moving the goods from the store uh, to consumption. So then... Uh, the goods are going to be issued by the storekeeper to production department or they are going to be issued by the storekeeper move to the user departments what is important for for control purpose these goods must be have a requisition so someone who wants the good must come with a requisition note what you call a material requisition note then after getting the material requisition note then you have a material issue and then the material are taken by that person has, has got a requisition. So this is a good example of a material requisition note. That is a, someone who wants to get material. It has the department, the date, the quantity, the description, the code, the job or to, to, to be charged on which job, then who made the requisition and then who approved uh, that requisition. So when the goods are when the goods are issued, then the storekeeper who issues out these goods, then that storekeeper prepare what called a material issue note. So the material issue note, it has the issued to where the, the goods are going. It must be a series, of course. It must have a number. It must have a date. Then the material requisition number. That is the lot, the quantity, the details, the code, 
the rate at which the goods were issued, the value, and then the department to which the goods uh, were charged. So it must be having who issued the good and then who received the goods and then who checked those goods when they are being issued. So let's look at uh, storekeeping. Uh, storekeeping, of course, is responsible for storage of material and issue of the material. So when it comes to storekeeping, that is storage and issue of the material. But the, the storage must have records or there are records that must be maintained uh, in storekeeping. So the, the, the store department is responsible for receiving the material. That is, when the goods are brought, it is the storekeeping or the storage department that is receiving receives the goods together with other members then holding this material that is keeping or storing the material and then issuing the material to the to the user department or issuing the material to production department so it is very very important uh, to have good controls uh, in this store keeping so store records must be maintained by the store department so the store department must maintain good records about uh, storage they should also provide information regarding the receipt issue and the stock issue as i said there are mainly three activities regarded to store keeping receiving of the material that is when when materials are brought in it is the storage department that is going to receive the materials then after receiving the material they store those material that they must ensure that it, the environment is good for the material and then issuing the material so that is those the user department are going to provide the requisition for this material and it's going to be the storage department to issue this material to the user department so it must have a record which shows the material that we are received the material that we are issued and then the balances of the material in the store so we can talk about these features of effective and a good store keeping. The first one is the immediate location of the material, knowing the mat where the materials are. Speed receipt and issue of the material. When uh, the goods are brought, you must be very fast to receive the goods. And it should be very fast also to issue the materials out. So full identification of all materials at all time. Ensuring that uh, you can uh, fully identify these materials at any given time keep correct and up-to-date records of receipt issue and store that's what i've already said in the previous slide that the main activities of the store keeping of storage is to ensure receipt issue and have maintaining the store records protection of the material against deterioration that is storage ensure that the material in a good condition in the store that is the all these ones protection of material against the fire that is ensuring material in good conditions economic usage of storage space that is proper planning for the storage space to ensure that you don't take a lot of space uh, in store so we can talk about the types of store the first one is the centralized store centralized store meaning that uh, you have one storage facility where you keep all the goods or called the central warehouse that all the goods of the organ all, all the material of the organization are kept in one uh, central store or central warehouse so another type is what we call uh, decentralized where in decentralized it means every department may have uh, a store so there you have a central store and then you have sub sub store for each department or each branch then you have what you call impressed. Impressed store, it means you, you receive material by the central store, but the items of this material are issued to sub stores. You have a central store that receives all the, the goods. After receiving these goods, then the goods are taken to sub, to sub store. That is a, what you call an impressed an impressed. So another important is a material coding. That is a same material coding. You are trying to assign a symbol. These are helping in a proper or easy identification of store. Instead of going to store, maybe looking for an item, 
from one point to another point, what is done is to ensure that the materials are coded. So you can put a symbol that maybe these are material A, these are material B, these are material C, this part is for material D, to ensure that you can easily identify the goods in the store. So that is material coding. That It's mainly for ensuring that you can easily identify these materials in your... In your so we have also principles of coding. Yeah, what are the, some of the guidelines when you are coding your materials in store? Exclusivity, that is ensuring that only one code is put on, a, on an item. You cannot have two items, A1, A2, A3, A4. In that case, you may end up getting, although it may be possible sometimes, but you may end up getting confused. Ensure that each item is coded different from another item to be clear or on easy identification of those items. So another point or another uh, principle is certainty. Certainty used for different types of material should be certain and should be no confusion. So that is uh, ensuring that you are certain that if it is A, material A is water, material B is this, material D, such so that you are certain in your numbering of these of this, uh, items in your store. So another one is what we call elasticity. Elasticity, that is, code number should be arranged in such a way that it must be possible to include new items if you need the allies. So when you are looking at it, you should not make it fixed. You should ensure that uh, the code number, they allow you to add another, another item uh, in your store. Then we have what called brevity. That is code should be as brief as possible. Don't make something that is going to confuse you when you are identifying the items. Then you look at uh, memorization. It should, th this code should be easy to memorize. If you say A, you should know where A is. If it is B, you should know where B is. Or if it is D, you should know where D is. Then you should have uniformity. That code should be equal length and the same structure. So don't make one code A, B, C, D, another one A, D, another one A, B. So you should ensure that if it is A, it is A. If it is A, B, so A, B, C, D, D, E, or there's something that can be easier for you uh, to identify. So let's look at uh, the store records. Remember we said that uh, as a storekeeper, you need to maintain uh, store records. And then, then uh, in store records, remember we said we are recording the goods you are receiving, the goods you have issued out, and the, the balance of the goods in the store. So that is the main issue in, in our store records. So ensuring uh, how many goods you have received, how many goods you have issued out, and then what is the balance of the goods in the store. You may also need another record where you record the goods that are damaged or the goods that have become obsolete uh, in your store. So these store records, sometimes we call them uh, storages or we call them uh, bin cards. So this is an example of a store, a store ledger. It has the store ledger account, the description, the stock level, the minimum stock level, maximum stock level, the order level, the order quantity. Then you have the date, how many, the receipt of the goods. This part is the receipt of the goods. Looking at the goods received note, the quantity you have received, the price of the goods you have received, and the value of the goods. So here we have the issue, and in the issue you have the material requisition number that you have received. Then you have the quantity of the goods you have received, you have issued out. Then you have the price of the goods that you have issued, and then the value of the goods. So at this end, you have the balance that remains in store, where you have the units that are in store and the value of those goods uh, in your store. So this is an example of a bin card. The difference in a bin card is that it, it provides a remark, uh, but it's almost similar to, to what we have looked at in, in, in store ledger.
still you have the maximum the material description the maximum stock level minimum stock level the order level the bin card number the code number and then the order level so here is the date this is the good the receipt receipt you have the goods received note you have the quantity uh, you have the material the quantity and the balance so another difference between a store ledger and a bin card this the bin card does not show the value of the stock it only shows the units of the stock in store whereas a stock ledger it shows the quantity the price and the value of the goods in store so that's the main difference between a store ledger and a bin card So stock taking, that is a physically calculating the amount of stock in, in store. That's what we call a stock taking. So when it comes to stock taking, you are calculating how many units of stock do I still have in my store. So at the end of the, the period, you need to know how many units do you need to have to store. So the, the physical unit, physically calculating the number of units that you have in store, that's what we call a stock taking. So dear members, uh, this is the first video. Please watch the second video on the same chapter of material costing.